Welcome to Interact's Quizspiration series, where we get to talk to some of our amazing customers about their Interact quizzes. Today, we get to speak with Crystal Allen Harahill, who is a life and relationship coach here to empower you in creating more ease and fulfillment in your relationships right now. Crystal believes that women can change their relationships, households, and communities by how they carry themselves, believe in themselves, and care for themselves mentally. Crystal's quiz, What Kind of Wife or Girlfriend Are You?, is currently the main driver of traffic to her website, and 100% of people who have completed the quiz so far have also opted in as a subscriber to her email list. Okay, let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Interact's Quizspiration, where we get to speak to some of our great customers about their quizzes. Today, super excited. I have Crystal Allen from crystalallen.com here with us. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us on our Quizspiration show. I'm honored to be here. I'm excited to chat with you. Yay, thank you. And we are going to talk about her quiz, which you guys will have linked at the bottom, so you should be able to to check it out um, and see what it is. But Crystal, can you go ahead? Everybody had sort of your formal bio already, but can you go Mm -hmm. ahead and talk a little bit more about your business, who your customers are, and then also your quiz? Thank you. Absolutely. So I am a life and relationship coach. And in my signature relationship coaching program, I work with women who basically are feeling frustrated in their relationship. And sometimes that can just be the relationship with themselves. Most of the women I work with are married or they have a significant other, but every now and again, I have the honor of working with a woman who's single, who just wants to work on herself. And these women are feeling frustrated. They're maybe feeling unseen, unheard, maybe undervalued in their relationship and they're professional women. So it's kind of a contrast of having a professional life that they're pretty content with or Um, just really kicking butt or excelling in, but when they look at their relationship, not so much. So these are women who are in a physically safe relationship, but they just know that things can be a little bit better. They don't want to leave. Um, They want to fix it. They may have tried therapy before. They may have tried different communication styles or, um, you know, experiments before, and nothing has really worked. And so my approach is completely different because I believe it only takes one person to fix a relationship or to heal a relationship. And I work with women on basically building up like their self-confidence and empowering them to look at their situation for really what it is. So that way they can make decisions with clarity and know exactly what they should be doing for their specific situations and teaching them specifically ways that they could be, you know, making themselves a little miserable in their relationship, for example, by looking at some of the expectations that they may have for their partner or their mate. So it's a really fun way to work with women. Um, I do it in a group setting and the women are actually able to remain anonymous if that's something that's important to them. But the group setting is intentional Um, Because when you have a group of women who need help in this type of, you know, area, it's amazing to see someone else get coached or to bring up an issue that you may secretly thought that only you were dealing with, or it's an issue that you never really felt comfortable talking with someone about. So it. One of the benefits of working with women in my group coaching program is they're able to be anonymous. So if privacy is an issue, I have them covered, but it's really powerful to be in a setting where you see someone else get coached or you see someone else bring to the table a topic that you've been kind of secretly holding back. You haven't shared it with your girlfriends. You haven't let a lot of people know. Um, And just to see someone else with a similar issue and to see them work through their problem, many times will encourage people who may not even have the, um, they may be a little shy and they may not want to raise their hand. And so being in a group setting for this type of work is really powerful. So I am truly honored to get with the, to get to work with the women who I, who I work with. I love that. I love yeah. that. And tell us about your quiz. What is it and how does it fit into your business? 
Yes. So it's so funny because I'm one of those people who I always laugh at myself because I don't, I never think that I'm creative enough. (laughs) And I spent some time like almost allowing myself to get stuck on what to call my quiz. And then I was like, I just need to be simple. Cause you know, you hear people say, be clear, not clever. Right. Mm, So the title of my quiz is what kind of wife or girlfriend are you? (laughs) That was the best that I could come up with, but it allowed me to get to the most important work, which was really truly like having a moment where I could sit down and really think about the different types of women who I work with. And it really allowed me to categorize them, you know, definitely generally, but I was able to find four categories of the type of women who I work with and allow them to read a little bit more about some of their tendencies that they may be seeing in their relationship. And more importantly, how those tendencies may be getting them the results that they're seeing in their relationship. So that's what's I think most important about the women who take my quiz, like, yeah, you, you click on the link because you want to say, you know, what kind of wife or girlfriend do you think I am? But more importantly, once you get through the quiz, I really made it a point to take some time and share, you know, some tips and some strategies on things that they could do literally right that moment after they're done reading it to try it out and, and, you know, just play around with it a little bit in their relationship. Yeah, I love that. And something that I caught as you were explaining your business and who you work with, you're really specific about your audience and about who your target is. How did that play a part in creating these four categories for your quiz? Yeah, Jasmine, that's so important to take time because, you know, if you're speaking to everyone, we know that you're speaking to no one basically, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's so important to really sit down and have some time where you can really just kind of hone in to who this person is that you're talking about. And I actually have like, oh, you know, my ideal client, I have her in my head. I have her named, you know, I, where she lives, like some of the things that she enjoys doing, that type of thing. You know, she's a business owner, that type of thing. And so having someone in your head that's super clear to you when you're speaking to your audience is so important. And even though many times I believe entrepreneurs want to skip over that part because it does take some brain work, you know, right? Yeah. You, really gotta, you gotta think about it and you gotta, you know, maybe even tap into your audience. If you have an email list, maybe reach out to them and, and you know, ask some questions or let them know that you're building this quiz and would they like to be a part of the process, you know, like be playful with it and be inquisitive and really make the time to get to know your audience. Because then when you sit down to actually write out the quiz, it is so much easier. I couldn't imagine doing the quiz without having, you know, these four women in mind. Yeah. I love that you said, if you're talking to everyone, then you're talking to no one, because I think it's, it is really scary to think, well, you know, am I counting people out? Am I excluding people if I don't speak to everybody, Mm -hmm. but you're actually making it easier for yourself and you're getting more quality leads if you know exactly who you're talking to, because you're speaking, it's almost like you're speaking to them directly, even if they don't know it yet. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, that's so true. But like when you, when someone is reading the results from my quiz or reading my website, and, and thankfully I'm in a point in my business where I have people saying this now, people will tell me, they'll say, it was like you were in my head Mm -hmm. or it was like you were speaking directly to me. And that's how you literally want to focus on writing your copy. And one thing that I definitely did that I want to share with your audience with many times over the years in my business, I would like buy, you know, a software or something like, you know, the interact quiz. And I would just dive in and just start, you know, doing stuff. But this time I told myself, I'm going to use every single resource (laughs) that this company is offering. So that way I can be as successful as possible and make the most of my money. Right. And so the number one, the emails that you all send out as soon as you 
you know, purchase a subscription are very helpful. I literally saved every email. I read through oh, them. Good. I did. I read <laughs> each email and then I, I took notes on what I should be doing, like the action steps. And then, you know, how you have the course mm -hmm. where basically it teaches you like how to write out your quiz, then how to write the follow-up emails, how to write the results page. I literally followed step-by-step all of the instructions that were, you know, laid out by Interact. So that was really helpful. And I, I encourage people to do that. Yeah, that's amazing. Cause I think on our end, we have so many resources, but it can seem overwhelming. So yeah. that actually leads me to, I think a really good question is um, from what I've heard working with other people um, and sometimes I'm in customer support covering, but mm -hmm. they do get so overwhelmed by the amount of information mm -hmm. uh, when creating a quiz because it is a fairly new concept, right? Yes. So um, I know you said you were taking notes and you were saving everything, but how did you sort of process all of that of like, okay, this is a new thing that I'm trying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen quizzes work, but I don't, haven't done one yet, obviously. So yeah. let me try to, you know, work through this so that it does come out right the first time. Yes. I think it's important to not allow yourself to get involved in like, you know, being overwhelmed is such an indulgent emotion. It's something that we can, you know, just stay in and just stay stuck in. And so just create a, a simple plan and stick to it. Whatever that plan is that you're actually going to do, that's the one that you should choose, not what maybe someone else is suggesting that you do. So if you know it's easier for you to um, learn by watching the course, then you guys have that as an option where you just go through the different modules, or maybe it's easier for you to just save all of the emails in a folder in your email account, like I did, and spend some time, maybe a couple times a week when you're first starting out with your quiz and set 30 minutes aside and just say, I'm going to go through and read through the emails and I'm going to take the action uh, notes from the emails and actually then take action and do that in creating my quiz. So keep it really simple and just don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed. I love that. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about, um, about overwhelm and yeah. I know before the call, before we hit record, we were talking a little bit about your numbers so far. So yeah. before we get into all of that, how would you say timeline wise, it did take you to kind of look through everything, all the information, strategize your quiz, build it out and then launch it. It probably took me, I should have actually kept actual dates. I think it was <laughs> two and a half weeks, but that that was because I think I was being really aggressive and I wanted to get it out and I wanted to um, get an ad running with it so I can just start seeing what this thing can do. And there were a couple of times where I had a couple of uh, stops during the process because I wrote, I wrote out my quiz. That's really important. Write it out first because then, or, you know, whether it's you physically write it out or you just type it into a Google doc or what have you, that makes the process of creating the quiz so much easier when you do the, the work ahead of time. And so at one point I wrote out the quiz and then I realized that I created the quiz like in the same order that I wrote it out. And then I had to go back and think, well, wait, because then that means if a person selected you know, A for each question, then the result's going to be so obvious. So yeah. I had to go back and like redo some things. So it's important to hear that, you know, I didn't have like this perfect, you know, process of, of going and creating the quiz. There were a couple of times I had to go in and make some changes and, um, but yeah, just make it a point to, um, you know, take time. Sometimes I think we just have to slow down yeah. to speed to speed up, right? We have to slow down to speed up. And I, I think many times when we want more leads or we want to grow our business, we just want to dive in and we just mm -hmm. want it now. But I encourage, I encourage listeners just to slow down a bit and put the work in to do it the right, do it their version of the right way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I think there, I also caught you saying that 
you just wanted to get it out. So it took you about two and a half weeks. So you were a little bit more aggressive with your time, but you didn't sit on like, okay, is this like the version that I want to put out? What do I want to fix? Exactly. It doesn't sound like you spent too much time tweaking besides sort of reorganizing. And, and Mm -hmm. I love that you did that because I've worked with people who, um, took like months to get it ready because they were trying to get it to that just perfect version, but you don't actually know what the perfect version is until you get feedback from people who took the quiz yes. or that first version of the quiz. That's so true because many times when, you know, when you're the business owner, like we are just so close to it. And when you get it out there to the people who you're really trying to serve, then allow them to speak to you and let you know whether that's something that connected with them or resonated with them. But, you know, my philosophy is done is better than perfect every Mm -hmm. single day. I love that. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the quiz itself. Um, what's the, what's sort of the workflow people get to your website. Do you take them directly to your quiz or is that sort of a step after another step? Where is it exactly? No, that's a good question. So when people jump onto my website, crystalallen.com, one of the menu buttons is free resources. And I have a quiz, you know, my quiz and the, a workshop there. So just two options. And when people definitely know that they want to take the quiz, the it's really clear. The button is just right there to start quiz. Um, so also be really clear with your, uh, your call to action button. So remember, be clear, not clever. Yeah. And so just say start quiz and then it takes them right to my interact quiz. And then um, once they take the quiz, they get their results immediately. But then based on what I learned from the interact modules on like the follow-up emails, then they also get an email with the results just in case, you know, they clicked out of that screen or that they just want to save their results to review for a later time. And then I have a couple other emails in the sequence where I invite them to a workshop or I invite them just to book a call with me and, and a free complimentary call to maybe ask any questions that they may have. Oh, I love that. I yeah. think it's, especially in your space, it's really, it's a really vulnerable sort it of be. service, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, yeah. I, I love that you kind of take the time to be like, well, let me answer questions that you have. So you feel yes. more comfortable. I think that's great because I would imagine if, if I were in that place and I was like, you know, it's also like a lot to admit. I, sure. I want yeah. to sort of improve myself. So to yes. also get that free call, I think is like it, there's a lot of trust um, yes. that I think is created by that. Oh, thank you. That. Thank That's you. Awesome. <laughs> I did take your quiz. So for those who are watching, um, I got, you are the confident type and I don't ah. know if I, 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 answered as honestly as I could, but you know, Good. working with quizzes, sometimes I'm like, I think I know where <laughs> this is going. Um, but I tried to answer as, uh, as honestly as possible, but I just loved mm. how you did really take the time to explain everything, gave actionable yeah. steps, introduced who you were. Yeah. Um, and then I did get that email at the end. So I Perfect. think that's awesome. And yeah, let's talk a little bit. I wanted this to segue sort of into your analytics because okay. um, I, I think your numbers are amazing. Thank so you, you launched this, we are recording this for reference for everybody. We're in October and I don't even know what date is mid October. It's like 18th. The 18th. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> We're in mid October. You launched your quiz around August, late August. Correct. Um, so in those, what is that? Three months, almost not even mm-hmm. three months. I think mm-hmm. it's like only like a month and a half, two months. Yeah. I'm bad at math guys, but you know That's what okay. I'm saying. Um, <laughs> so it, it, I'm going to just lay it out for everybody. You have 735 views in that time, 567 actual quiz starts, 322 completions. And this number is off because I did it in preview mode, but you have 323 leads. And that's because of me. I'm sorry. I messed it's up. Okay. <laughs> um, I was like, that's weird, but it's because I opted in on the preview, um, the preview quiz. But anyway, so point of my story is hypothetically, if you match completions to leads, it's a hundred percent. So yes. everybody who took the quiz completed and opted into your email list, which is amazing. Yeah. And then you have, I, I'm, that's a little bit more than 50% from quiz starts 
if yes. I'm looking at that correctly. And like I said, I'm not good at math, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys will see all the numbers below, but point yeah. of my story is, is your quiz is so engaging. People are loving it. So what I know numbers all look great, but is that mm-hmm. what you consider successful for your quiz or what do you consider as a success in this campaign? I, it was important for me to get quality leads. Um, that's always something really important because no matter how big your email list is, if the people on your email list are not engaging or, you know, they spend some time with you and then they're not, you know, interested in even some of your free products. Um, and then definitely, of course, hoping one day they'll, they'll participate in your paid products, then, you know, that's not a healthy email list in in my eyes. And so um, it was important for me not to just have a bunch of people on my, on my list and have some, you know, a good list of people who were curious about this information that I was offering in this quiz. And then ultimately, you know, wanted to either participate in a workshop or participate in um, a discovery call. And so I actually, I, I didn't think to run those um, conversion numbers for either. So forgive me, um, <laughs> but all good. yeah, but to answer your question, what was most important for me, it, it was having, having clients who really were interested in, you know, like making this change in their life or getting more curious about the relationship that they're in in a different way to you know, start the process of healing it. Um, So that, that was the biggest thing for me. I love that. I think that's great because we can talk about numbers all we want, but at the end of the day, I mean, I think what's super important is how you look at what, what is considered successful for you Mm -hmm. and your business. But I will say for your quiz, these numbers are great. So great job. Yeah. (laughs) Great job. I think it's beautiful. Um, A question that I wanted to ask based off of that was really just, I know you said you wanted quality leads. You wanted people who Mm -hmm. were interested. So um, how, what was the original problem that you were trying to solve in your business by using a quiz? And do you feel that it did accomplish that or is accomplishing that? Yeah. You know, I, it really was bringing in uh, more traffic, right? Because when we do look at like the numbers of the business and when you feel like you have a good quiz, you know, like how you read off the statistics, the statistics where people who um, started, they completed all the way through Mm -hmm. uh, that type of thing. So I knew that my questions were clear and um, people were moving through the quiz and getting all the way to the result. So that was important because if you look at your analytics and you see that there's like, you know, starts and stops, and you may need to go back and look at how your questions are worded, that type of thing. So having that information um, really allowed me just to focus on bringing in more traffic. And so, um, yeah, that, that really was my, my biggest goal because I wasn't as active consistently on social media, on like any of the platforms. And so I thought this would be a really fun way for me to, of course, I ran an ad to it, but to also, it's easy to share, you know, it's really shareable on social media. And so, yeah, that was the biggest thing for me. Oh, I love it. And yeah, I will say it's through taking your quiz, it's super clear, very concise. Good. And I will say that it's like, it's so interesting because when you're taking your quiz, you kind of think like, oh, like these are vulnerable questions, but they're not too bad. Yeah. But you know, it's it's not even that long. And then you get to your right. result and it's packed with information, which yes. I always love because you don't want it to be, you don't want the quiz to be too long. Right. You don't want it to be too wordy but um, you're still giving so much value. And I think I, like, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, whoa. (laughs) (laughs) That's what my goal is that to over deliver. So I'm so happy that you felt that that's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. And then you get your email. And so I'm excited to see the rest of the sequence. So yeah. Thank you. So cool. (laughs) Um, Well, I don't have anything left besides my last question to wrap up, um, if you're ready for it. 
I'm ready. All right. So in three sentences, um, how would you describe what Interact has done for your business? If you could say it in like 25 words or less. Mm. I gave you two metrics. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Interact has made lead building easier, um, fun, and data-driven. I love it. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Crystal, thank you so much for being on here and telling us all about how you strategize your quiz, um, what it's doing for your business and how it's going. Uh, like I said, guys, we will have screenshots and links for you at the bottom. So check those out and we will link to Crystal's website as well. But are you on social media? Is there anywhere that people can find you online if they're looking? Yeah, absolutely. So on Facebook and Instagram, you can find me at Life Coach Crystal. And then on LinkedIn, I am at Crystal Allen Harahill, my full name. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you again. And guys, we will see you next time. Bye.